Hello, thank you for joining us today. This is our third webinar of the 2018 series of webinars for fraud, waste, and abuse. I'm joined today by my colleague, Patrick O'Brien, who will be the solution engineer giving us our demonstration today. You'll notice on this slide, uh, questions will be answered at the end. So please look for that panel and type in any questions you might have. We'll answer them at the end and we don't care if we go over time, so that will be fine. Our first webinar covered all the topics as an overview for the year. The second one covered fuel card fraud, and today's is about contract fraud. I'll now pass it over to Patrick. Thank you, Scott. So um, today what we're gonna be talking about is recognizing and monitoring contract fraud. Um, for this uh, season's um, uh, webinars, we have been uh, specifically talking about specific topics within fraud, waste, and abuse of how GIS can be implemented to combat that fraud, waste, and abuse. Um, so today we're going to be talking about recognizing and monitoring contract fraud. So today, uh, in direct relation to contract and grant fraud, we're going to explore how GIS can be used to enable transparency within your organization, uh, recognize and monitor contract fraud, and maintain accountability um, within, within uh, your organization. And we'll talk about specific examples of how GIS can be implemented for each of these, um, each of these, each of these um, topics. So the first, um, or the first topic that I, I want to hit on is enabling government transparency. So making public funds available. So we have worked with organizations in the past, um, both in the federal and the state and local, um, state and local uh, forms of government, of and it, ways to, to have them enable transparency with all of their work. We have worked with the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, um, as well as uh, multiple state and local agencies. So today we're gonna be also be talking about Iowa Department of Transportation and the LA uh, city. So the first topic that I wanna, wanna cover is this topic of transparency. So transparency can be enabled using GIS in multiple ways. The first way is simply by, by giving maps and interactive maps to uh, constituents. So here we have a very basic story map series application using interactive maps to show the 2017 federal funds per state. So with each of these maps, uh, all of our constituents can click on their, their own specific state to see what agency is spending what, what kind of money within the state. So as you can see, this is a very easy chloropleth map um, looking at uh, each of these states in relation to the sum of funds awarded in 2017. Using the story map series application, we have also broken down by each agency where money is being spent. So for this specific uh, mapping application, we have highlighted just a few of these uh, state of these federal agencies, such as the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Defense, the Department of Transportation, the highest federal spending uh, agency in relation to contracts and grants, the Department of Health and Human Services, and finally, the Department of Veterans Affairs. So this application was very easy to create. Um, we have the, the total amount of funds awarded by each agency for each state, all in one layer. So if you notice within this first chloropleth map, when I click on the pop-up for each state, it gives me the total number of federal funds per state awarded and a breakdown by each state. So when I created the rest of these maps, for these specific agencies, I just changed the styling of the map to identify the federal funds awarded by each of these agencies. This is a very easy type of mapping application that can be uh, created and, and published very fast. Um, altogether, this, this mapping application took me about an hour and a half to complete. The main part of this application um, that that was um, that took some time was the simple data manipulation. Um, after we were able to get the data into a consumable format, 
we were very easily able to geocode uh, these locations by each state, uh, meaning that we applied each of the um, federal funds per state to the boundary. And then we simply created a base map or, or in, uh, put in a base map um, of this dark gray base map to our, our map and then added in each one of these layers. And using the edit function of the story map series application, we were very easily and uh, in a fast manner able to um, able to make each one of these maps for each specific agency. So here I just went into the edit function of this specific map of this specific mapping application. And as you can see, using story maps, it's very easy to edit and add and organize all of these maps. So I have the ability to um, edit the specific map that we're looking at. And when editing the specific map, I can change certain configuration to the map. So here it allows me to select a specific map, which I'm using for all of these tabs within the story map series, I'm using the same, same exact map, the federal funds per state in 2017. I can also change my map default um, to a different custom configuration. So if I want to zoom into a specific part of the country, I can change that. Um, I can change that that functionality uh, directly here within the story map. How I was able to create all of these tabs through a different map or through one single map was changing the cut the um, content of each map to a custom configuration. So for each of these maps, I have different layers associated with these different federal funding amounts. So for each one of these tabs, I simply selected down this list of which map, which map layer I wanted to show. And then we can uh, change some custom configuration to the pop-ups and also do uh, very few extras such as adding a legend or placing alternative text into this uh, pop-down uh, view that you see on the left. So if I do wanna place some text on uh, what exactly we are seeing within this map, I can do so directly here in the edit functionality of the story map. Story map series are a very easy way to, uh, to, um, to share your data. Um, so as you can see here within this story map, um, I have very easily and quickly been able to share the 2017 federal funds per state for multiple agencies very easily and very quickly um, in a very organized manner also. So I can send this URL to anyone in, within my organization or I can make this, um, this story map public uh, to the entire, entire world and then they can walk through this story map and be able to understand the story that I'm trying to tell of where the federal funds per state are being spent. We can also add in new, new maps, which will bring us back to that edit function, um, being able to change, change specific maps or just edit the, the content within the map. And we can very easily organize our maps. So as I mentioned, the Department of Health and Human Services um, produces the most contracts and grants in a monetary value. If I wanna put them to the top of the list, I can click apply. And as you can see, after my total federal funds per state tab, my next tab is now the Department of Health and Human Services. I can save this mapping application and then click view story, which will bring me to the finished product. So once again, using story maps is a very easy way um, to take your data, to tell the story that you want to, and in this case, being able to tell the story of where, where federal funds are being spent, uh, being able to show transparency and accountability within the federal government. Other ways that we can um, use GIS and mapping applications to share this transparency is by creating dashboards. So here, this dashboard that we're looking at are the 2017 NASA grants. Um, so we have this dashboard using the new operations dashboard, um, which is available with ArcGIS Online or um, Portal for ArcGIS. And this new mapping um, interface allows us to insert many different 
uh, window panes within one, one view. So here, as you can see, we have two maps. We have two different lists on the left-hand side. The lists are showing the top 10 grants per, um, awarded by NASA and also the top 10 states in funding, um, funding uh, dollars awarded by NASA. Both of these map extents are, are linked together. So if I change the uh, location of the map that I'm viewing in one of these maps, it will apply those same changes to the other map. So each of these maps, uh, the map on the left is looking at the sum of the um, money of grants awarded to each state. And the map on the right is actually looking at each of these grants being awarded by which agency within NASA. So as you can see, we have a lot of large red dots indicating the uh, large grants for aerospace education services program. Also down on the bottom, these um, dashboards can also show um, temporal information. So here we're looking at when these grants were awarded uh, by month um, through each of these agencies. Once again, this map can be made public or can be can remain private to my organization. So I can share this um, on a web page on my uh, home screen for my organization so the public can come in and see where money is being spent, um, if any money is being spent near them, and the overall um, expenditures of my organization. This can also remain private um, to your organization. This would be a good leadership view of seeing where money is being spent uh, within the organization. It's a great briefing tool, uh, something that you can once again send a URL to somebody. They can open this up on uh, any browser or on any device. Um, so there's new capability of having operations dashboard open within uh, mobile app, uh, mobile devices, tablets and, and uh, phones. Um, so someone can come into this app, to this dashboard and gain an overall situational awareness of the money being spent. This next application is using one of the configurable apps within uh, ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. Um, this is the um, what we call the Federal Grants Explorer application. So this allows us to search by a specific address or click on the map for on a for on a specific point and search within a radius of that point of the federal grants being spent. Uh, this is a great public awareness application. Um, so uh, constituents can see where money is being spent near them. Um, this is an application that we created here um, in, at Esri, um, looking at these federal grants. And each one of these grants, as you can see on the left-hand side, it gives us a total number of grants being spent within three miles of this location. And we can run through each of these grants to identify where these grants are actually being spent, um, who the money is going to, um, for greater awareness. This is the local perspective application within ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. It's once again, very easy to configure. And we also allow you to incorporate other information, not just the, um, the data that you're trying to display, but also demographic information. Um, so within this location, within this boundary, what was the 2010 total population? That's coming from the decennial census and also a breakdown of the demographics of, of the region. Once again, we can uh, either click on the map to identify the number, the uh, grants being spent within a specific area, or we can search the map. So if I want to search for a specific place, I can type in an address, or I can type in a, a, a location. Um, so if I wanna search for the White House, I don't have to type in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's using a gazetteer that will allow me to type in the White House. It will find the address and then also return the federal grants being spent uh, within a specific radius. These specific radiuses can also be maneuvered. So right now I'm looking at uh, a two mile radius from the White House, or I can jump that up to uh, anywhere up to 10 miles. That is a um, that is a configuration setting within this application. So you can set your view restraints based off of what you want. Now, how this is being used in the public space is through Los Angeles City. 
So LA City produced this application. Uh, this is what's called LA Streetwise, being able to understand the um, the road work going on uh, in different parts of Los Angeles City. As you can see, looking at the legend, each of these dots indicates a different type of, of uh, road construction, whether that is a uh, street evacuation, a capital a city capital improvement project, if there's a road resurfacing, a regional transit pro project, uh, street improvements, or even special events. Um, that's something uh, that you know would be pertinent to know um, whether you are a constituent, um, a citizen in the city of Los Angeles, being able to understand how these, these uh, road closures and uh, road improvements are going to affect you. Also within the organization, being able to see um, what other construction is going on in the area. It gives them the ability to plan for a specific road, uh, road construction. Um, so if we're going to close down this road segment for, um, for something like resurfacing, maybe if there's a street improvement project that needs to happen, we can close down the road at, at the same time to do both of those projects, uh, mitigating the effect on the public. So here we also have the um, current work uh, being done. And as you can see in the uh, right hand pane, there's also the time remaining for each of these, each of these road projects. This gives constituents just a greater uh, understanding of how they're going to be affected and the time frame in which they're going to be affected. Now, all of this information here is being driven directly from the data. So here for this resurfacing project, which is going to remain for eight months, we get some information on the uh, category, the type of, of project being uh, conducted, as well as if we want to ask some more questions, somebody to be a contact person. We can also gain more information on reports. So actually go into the uh, Los Angeles um, uh, city information uh, to look at PDF reports on these specific projects. And as you can see for each of these projects, the road segment is also being noted. So that is the current work for each of these uh, locations, but we can also look at upcoming work. This gives us the ability to look at uh, different events happening in the future. Um, one thing that uh, the city of Los Angeles might want to understand is if something is going to be affected during a, um, during a, uh, uh, a specific special event. So if I use the gazetteer and I search for the Staples Center, and let's say that the, um, the Los Angeles Lakers are having their opening game, I might wanna know what type of road projects are, are upcoming and how that's going to affect my traffic pattern for these very large um, events. Other organizations that we see using GIS to, for transparency is uh, the Iowa Department of Transportation. They have two applications that they publicly uh, make available to, to, the, uh, to everybody. Um, the first being a track a plow application. This gives a live look at all of the, um, the, the location and the number of plows within the state of Iowa. And it also gives you the ability to have a snapshot from that plow. So these plows, as you can see, in uh, orange, all have information um, where they are, when the last report was, um, but they also bring, uh, send back images from the front of the plow. So we can um, identify these, these images and gain an understanding of what the roads may look like. So as of right now, uh, the roads seem uh, fairly clear, but as you can imagine in the state of Iowa during a snowstorm, uh, these roads can be extremely hectic. So how they are able to uh, tell their consistent constituents how they're spending money, they use this application, which is called the Winter Cost Calculator. So this Winter Cost Calculator allows the, um, the citizens of Iowa to understand how much money is being spent on what road segment. Um, so here what they do is they have an estimated cost for the last 48 hours of these road segments. So if I click on one of these road segments, I can see when the last time a plow was on that road, 
how long they spent, and if they applied any material on the road. So in, in uh, winter, um, the state of Iowa spends a lot of money keeping the roads uh, clean and safe for, for Iowa citizens. Um, and this just gives transparency to citizens understanding um, how much money exactly is being spent and if their tax dollars are being spent efficiently. This is using another uh, a web app builder application. So as you can see on the bottom, we have a total aggregation of the total costs um, being spent to Iowa taxpayers, as well as how much material, labor, and equipment cost there is within this map view. If I change this map view and zoom into the Des Moines area, these totals will change. So as you can see, uh, currently about $10,000 has uh, in total has been spent in the last 24 hours um, for these, uh, these Iowa State uh, plows. So that is just a very quick um, and uh, uh, easy way to understand how the uh, Iowa, um, how organizations are using GIS for government transparency. Um, so all government organizations at the state, uh, at the federal, state, and local levels uh, produce grants and hold contracts. Uh, GIS and public applications allow uh, the organization to ensure transparency so constituents know where money is being spent. Um, that gives them the accountability to uh, report back if money is not being spent in a uh, applicable manner. The next topic we want to talk about is how we can use GIS to recognize and monitor contract fraud. Um, this is being able to follow the flow of money. So in 2017, the federal government spent $5.3 trillion on grants and contracts. Uh, that is excluding any state and uh, local, uh, local expenditures. Um, so that is an immense am amount of money uh, being spent and very few organizations being able to track if those federal grants and contracts are being spent in, a, um, in an applicable manner. So GIS allows us to use uh, just an, it's another tool being able to uh, use location-based technology so we can monitor this flow of money from its source to its consumer. So I'm going to show a application. Um, this is a, a demonstration application on how the United States Postal Service is combating this type of fraudulent activity. So the USPS knows two facts. It knows the uh, rewardee for all of their contracts, and it also knows a uh, the home, lo home address of all of its employees. Um, this is an example of how they're combating uh, contract fraud double dip. Uh, contract fraud double dip is the, um, is the fraudulent process in which a USPS contract is awarded to a, a family member, um, spouse, a, a neighbor of a USPS employee in a fraudulent manner. So USPS contracts need to be um, properly um, and and equally distributed throughout the population. Um, but sometimes we see the um, fraudulent uh, application of these, these contracts um, to these uh, you know, known USPS um, uh, employee, uh, friends, spouses, family members. So what we've done is we have geocoded both of those locations. We've geocoded the location of the contracts of USPS and geocoded the home address of USPS employees. This allows us to create custom tools. So what this tool is, is um, going to do is it's going to allow us to search within a specific area to see if any um, USPS uh, contract was potentially awarded uh, in a fraudulent manner. So one analysis I can do is a distance filter. So here what we're doing is we're setting uh, certain constraints on which contracts we want to, to view. So for this example, what I want to view is I want to view any contract that was awarded within, we can say 100 feet of a USPS employee where the amount paid is greater than $10,000. And the zip code starts with 
uh, certain three digits. So I might want to search for 191, which is the Philadelphia area. Um, so using this tool, um, I can very easily and quickly query my, my data to try to find these, this fraudulent activity. So as you can see, it returns six results. Now, yes, it's only six results, but when, uh, when trying to look at the broad picture, I'm searching within 100 feet of a USPS employee. Um, this also brings us a list of these results. So we can go through one by one to understand uh, how far each, each USPS employee is. Uh, in this case, um, E and Y air conditioning uh, was awarded a $72,000 contract and they live within 40 feet of a USPS employee. Now that could be in the same location. It could be in a, um, a housing complex uh, apartments, but that might be something that we might want to investigate further. So using GIS, we have been able to uh, create a custom application that will allow us to search for uh, contracts that may have been awarded in a fraudulent manner. This isn't going to strictly prove um, prove fraud in these in these uh, awarding of uh, contracts, but it may be a very good indicator of of fraud. As you can see, uh, Think Group LLC um, was awarded one hundred thousand uh, dollars a contract through USPS employee, and they live within twenty feet of a USPS employee. Once again, um, it's not proving fraud, but with this monetary value, this would be sent to the top of my investigations lists. Moving on, the final topic that we, that we wanna talk about is accountability, uh, making sure the job is actually completed. So uh, this specific example is being brought out through um, a lot of times of disaster um, so as you know, we all know there have been many hurricanes uh, that have already hit the United States this year, um, Florence and, and Matthew, and um, uh, last year we were devastated with uh, Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma. Uh, um, using uh, information such as uh, data sources from uh, various, uh, various data publishers, um, we can harness all of this information in one mapping application to make sure that we have accountability, to make sure jobs are actually being create, uh, um, completed. So one way that we might use this is if a, uh, we give a contract to a company to rebuild a road, we can uh, locate the information of, of where the place of performance is for that contract and use information such as imagery to see what's the status of the construction of the road. Is this road actually being completed? So let's look to see how we can uh, use GIS and mapping applications to solve this problem. So here I'm using, once again, a web app builder. Uh, this is a custom tool that, that um, is created. It's all configurable and uh, it allows me to uh, create an application with custom tools uh, that will um, solve my problem or help solve my problem. So here within this map, I have a, a couple of uh, different um, information related to Hurricane Harvey. Um, so we have uh, the Hurricane Harvey contracts, uh, all the contracts that were awarded in relation to Hurricane Harvey, and the uh, grants also uh, awarded um, in result of Hurricane Harvey. So this information we collected from usaspending.gov. It is a free download to download any uh, contract or any grant for any federal organization. So for this example, I'm going to um, specifically look uh, down here in the Houston area. Now, one thing that I've also incorporated in this map is imagery. So I've incorporated imagery from uh, directly after the uh, the hurricane, uh, directly after Hurricane Harvey. So as you can see, slightly uh, uh, different color. Uh, change, change the base map so we can specifically see these locations. So I'll change it to the uh, light gray setting. 
so all the imagery that you're seeing here is was collected um, a day or two after Hurricane Harvey. Now what I want to do is I want to use this imagery to understand is work being completed. So by selecting one of these dots, we can look at the pop-up. So this was a contract awarded um, to Jetson Incorporated. Uh, the awarding agency was the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, and this contract was, uh, was uh, given to remove debris and flood damage caused by Hurricane Harvey uh, at this location. So let's zoom down to see exactly what this location is. So this location looks like it's a some sort of a processing plant. If I once again change my base map um, to something that might tell us exactly what this is, and then I turn off my custom imagery, it might give us an idea of exactly what this location is. So this is Turkey Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant. So this contract was awarded for um, removal of debris and flood damage caused by the hurricane. So using the imagery collected directly after Hurricane Harvey, we can see that there is um, obviously flooding damage um, at this location. But I've also incorporated a story map, uh, a, a swipe tool within this application, as you can see up here at the top left. So using this swipe map, I can see current imagery in relation to historic imagery. So the current imagery, as we can see, this processing plant looks like it's back up and running. Uh, the damage has been um, mitigated. Um, any debris that, that was there is now not, not currently there. So we can, we can uh, see from not going into the field and actually doing a assessment um, what the change is over time. So this is um, a very great example of, of how we can, you know, uh, make sure that uh, we have accountability in our grants and contracts uh, using imagery. Uh, it's a very simple, um, uh, simple process to bring in imagery. Um, this imagery was brought in from our DRP program. That's our Esri Disaster uh, Response Program, uh, where we give uh, all types of information related to these uh, natural disasters. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, data and mapping applications associated to wildfires, severe weather, hurricanes, and humanitarian interests. So uh, once again, in, in, uh, as a recap, um, during times of disaster, um, that is how we can use imagery to make sure work is being completed. Um, even uh, outside of uh, thinking about disasters, if we were to use the LA Streetwise application that we saw earlier, being able to uh, use imagery to see the progress of construction. So um, to, that's the uh, final for today's webinar. Um, we uh, appreciate uh, you joining us. And if you have any questions, please type it into the, um, into the uh, uh, chat window. Um, and just as a recap, um, you know, why is this important to understand the flow of money? Um, as I mentioned, uh, strictly within the federal government, uh, $5.3 trillion was spent on grants and contracts. Um, this is not including any state or local grants and contracts. Um, we currently work with um, multiple federal agencies uh, using GIS technology to identify contract fraud. Um, unfortunately, uh, contract fraud from one agency to another looks very different. Um, so there is a, a cross-cutting problem to understand the flow of money, um, but what we've seen is each specific organization has their, their own problems that they're trying to mitigate. Um, so that's where we would like for you to, to reach out to us um, so we can work together. Uh, having a strict GIS professional such as myself work with subject matter experts such as you to try to mitigate this problem. Um, so um, we can use location-based technology. We can monitor the flow of money from its source to its consumer. Um, RJS also allows us to ensure that transparency, uh, ensure transparency that the money is being spent um, and going to consumers in a legal fashion without neglect. So uh, thank you very much. And Scott, I'm going to pass it back to you. All righty. Thank you, Patrick.
Uh, we have we have some questions. First is, can you show what the underlying CSV file looks like on the federal funds demo? Sure. Yeah. Let me uh, just pull that up into um, another um, another uh, window. Um, USAspending.gov is the open uh, website. Um, it's very easy to maneuver around. Um, what I like to do is I like to go to the um, the download section um, where it makes uh, downloading uh, very easy to do. Um, you can go in here and search through uh, different uh, types of information. So if we want to search for the award level, uh, whether they're prime or sub awards, um, select the award types, you know, once again, contracts or grants, and also filter by agencies. Um, so if I want to do Health and Human Services, Center for Medicare and Medicaid, uh, we can filter the, all of this information here, um, filter by a date, and then return us back a CSV. Um, so here I will show you what the contracts look like. Um, once again, you know, this kind of looks like a mess. Um, that's where, you know, GIS kind of, um, uh, you know, it's it's not exactly GIS work here. It's data manipulation to get it into a consumable format. Um, the interesting thing about these contracts is, as you notice here, we have a couple of different location fields. Uh, here, these location fields here are the recipient of the contract. So that could be the company being awarded the contract, but they also have the place of performance. Um, so this is where we like to say, you know, this is where the work is being done. Um, so we can use the imagery to understand, you know, is that work currently being done? Um, how fast is, is the work moving? Um, and there's other information on here, such as uh, what uh, is the description of the award, um, as well as, you know, the uh, awarding agency. So there's many ways to search that website. Um, but it's very easy to download the CSVs. Um, all you need to do to uh, ingest that into any GIS is uh, to find the location fields and run a simple geocoding process. All right, our next question is, how were the street repair work locations in LA identified? By street address or by geo coordinates? Um, that's, a, that's a good question and I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but um, as we can see, um, we have a couple different things. So one is we have points, um, but these points are also associated to a boundary. So here's a special event. This is the uh, House of Hoops courtside experience. Uh, this is actually a, a Nike event. And as you can see, this event is, is associated with a polygon. So not only are we working with the points of these, of these locations, but it's actually the specific polygons which is where I think that uh, the city of LA is, is uh, gaining their information. Um, so they have these specific areas. If it's road paving along a line, they will use the line, um, the line of the uh, paving uh, to ingest into this uh, application. Um, I'd, I don't specifically work with the city of LA. Um, uh, I work mainly on the federal level, but uh, that's, a, that's a great question. And I'm sure we could reach out um, and connect uh, with uh, the person who specifically built this application. And our final question is, what technology was used to complete the apps? Do I need portal? Um, so you don't specifically need portal for ArcGIS, um, but all of the apps that we've showed today, um, as you've noticed, I've been in a web browser. So you do either um, need ArcGIS Online or portal for ArcGIS. Um, so it doesn't matter uh, which one you use. Uh, ArcGIS Online is the uh, software as a service. That's you know the external uh, uh, GIS system. Um, Portal for ArcGIS is the same thing as ArcGIS Online, uh, set behind your firewall. So um, yes, today we were working with WebGIS. Uh, it's a little bit different than desktop, but um, either ArcGIS, excuse me, ArcGIS or Portal for ArcGIS were um, were used. Alrighty, thank you everyone for joining us and have a great day.